this is the first time I attend this event. Actually, second time. Okay. I joined here in August. So uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk, uh, give my career experience and research vision. Okay. And why I come to this department. And I have a bachelor degree in automotive engineering. Right, I have a PhD degree in mechanical engineering. Now we are in Navy architecture and marine engineering department. So again, I said I want to share my experience about career development and research vision. Okay, thank you. Uh, here, uh, let me see, it didn't work. Okay, so it's about me. This uh, figure shows my career path uh, after I come to US 23 years ago. So I stay in Boston five years. After that, Chicago for another four years. Then move to New York for six years and Virginia for eight years now in Michigan. Okay, so take a, take a look at what I have done. My undergraduate a degree is automotive engineering. Okay. And uh, when I come to MIT, I finished two masters, one ME, mechanical engineering, another in electric engineering. Okay. And in my master's thesis, I work on the Nissan graphing machine about vibration in the Nissan graphing machine. Okay. So then I, uh, after master study, I briefly did an internship summer job in GE, we work on the gas turbine. Okay, so then I come back to MIT to finish my PhD. I work on the uh, LIGO project, laser interferometer, laser, laser, laser interferometer gravitationary observatory. Okay, this is project one, 2017 uh, Nobel Prize, okay. My contribution is to work on the vibration control side here. Okay. And then after my finish, I finished PhD, I joined a pharmaceutical company. So Abbott Lab. It, uh, all the same, all the uh, same now there, they talk about a drug discovery. So I work in automation engineering group. I work on uh, some robotic system like this is a very large one. Uh, this okay, and this is for the uh, drug storage room. This is a chemical reactor like that. This is some micro sensor, or it's uh, it's about one millimeter by one millimeter. We have hundred probe that detect the neuron signal. So this is totally different. Then I come back to university. I work on the energy harvesting. Look at my career path. Wow, all these are totally different, right? You wondered what need me to this department, what we are doing. Okay, so, so this is a brief introduction and uh, I will tell you how my career path technically and my vision, okay. So, uh, in that time, I worked in a pharmaceutical company from 2004 to 2008. So I worked in a company, and uh, I'm very lucky that my boss, uh, Jeff, is a very, very good person. Okay, why I'm lucky? Because I can always argue with him. I say, no, I say, your idea is not right. I can argue that. Okay, I say, I'm lucky. We, we are, we are still good friends when we get together and in Chicago, whenever I travel to, to, to Chicago, we also have lunch together. Okay. So in the four years uh, and the first two years in company, I feel excited. Everything's new in pharmaceutical company, right? And I'm engineer. I bring my engineering skills to the pharmaceutical environment. I saw this problem. Some ideas in my view is pretty easy, but for the uh, drug discovery, the scientist is very, very hard. Okay, I use my engineering knowledge to solve the problem. However, a lot of times, Jeff, my manager and I could not find agreement. 
he's a very, very smart guy. He finished all his degree, uh, bachelor degree, master degree, and PhD from MIT. So, and I once joke, I say, Jeff, you, this war you said is black, and probably in the group we have only, in that time we have 13 people, okay? And uh, I say, now 13, 12, 12 people in, report to him. I said probably 11 and a half percent told you, oh, told you, yeah, no, 11 percent will tell you, yes, Jeff, you are smart, this is black. Okay, and I'm the one who, who argue with you, say this is not black. Okay, so he's very smart. He's boss in the uh, in the group, and uh, once smart, a lot of people argue with him. Eventually, it turn out uh, he's right, and another say he's very arrogant. So people don't want to argue with him. <laughs> okay, so however, during the after two years, in the third year, I feel a little frustrated. I want to be my own boss. I said, "What should I do?" Right. So then I decided, okay, probably it's time to come back to university. So uh, what should I do? And in that year, uh, 2017, I attended a conference. Conference is, uh, in that conference, mechanical engineering conference is a vibration sub-conference. In that sub-conference, uh, Dan Inman, and actually he was former department chair in Michigan's aerospace department. Give a talk. The talk is good vibration. Okay. They talk about how to positively use the vibration. In that time, I say probably I should look into energy housing. And as you know, in 2017, in that time, the oil prices go very, very high. So I look into energy housing. So energy housing, and uh, this is a company's research. So people look into solar energy, into vibration energy and the same energy, right? They use different way to get energy, sonar, PV, same electric material, generator, and piezo electric. So they predict the market increases company and uh, from 600 million to billion dollars, this is data 2010. Okay, so, don't know why this didn't work, okay. So, so you say, look at the paper, right? And in that time, this uh, energy half the number of people increased very, very quick. And uh, when I get frustrated in the time, I feel oh, it's a good time to jump into this area. So uh, in that time, even you harvest uh, watts network energy, most people look into microwatts, miniwatts energy. You get five watts or this type of level, you can, you can pound your paper in the nature, in science, right? So as I mentioned, I got frustrated after working four years in the company. I said, what should I do? Jump into this field. And in this field, this is inspired by uh, Dr. Dan Inman. He, uh, gave a, uh, he, uh, he got a career award, a uh, life achievement award, this Ben Hartog award in vibration area. He gave a talk, good vibration. So in that conference, 2017, 2007, my advisor already didn't get tenure from MIT, he left. So I couldn't find enough people to write a recommendation for me. So I meet Dr. Sun in the conference. I said, I got frustrated in company. I want to come back to university. Can you write a letter for me? And the Dr. Sun said, sure. And because I met him so many years in the conference, he said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to work on energy housing. I think Dr. Dan Yiman talk exciting, uh, exciting. He told me, no, if you work on energy housing, I don't think you can survive. And the reason he gave his two reasons. Okay. One reason is you don't have vibration energy housing background. You never publish any paper in the vibration energy housing, right? How can you convince the university to give you offer, right? How another thing is, he said, you look like Professor Dan Inman's work, and he published a lot of grants and mostly from Air Force, from NASA, right? 
the people that were not, you are international people with international person without a background in the field. There's no way you can survive in the field. Okay. And this discussion inspired me. Okay, what should I do? And in, uh, look into the micro uh, microwaves, the type of energy to power the watch, the type of thing, can we get large energy? Instead of nanowatts, microwatts, can we get more even to power the grid? So that is what happened in that conference discussion. Okay, so I look into that. Okay, yes, not just, not just energy, you need larger vibration. Like larger vibration from silver structure, turbulence, right? And from the bridge. And you guys know Takana Lero, what's the bridge in what? Okay, this, this type of bridge, Takana Lero bridge in Washington, is a field, right? Because when you induce vibration. So, and the truck, car, there are a lot of vibration too, ocean vibration. So, let us take, the, uh, take this problem as an opportunity, right? <laughs> Instead of civil engineers or automotive engineers, more engineers try to design something to turn our vibration, to reduce the vibration. Let us use this vibration. So that is uh, uh, what I have done, okay. And uh, in that time, I look into literature to think, okay, traditional vibration, what's a traditional vibration, okay. What's my background can, can create a new direction. Okay, As, uh, in the conference discussion, right? I cannot directly compete with the pioneer in the field. How can I survive? Okay, look into the small vibration, mostly it's vibration, just vibration problem. And the certain work on the resonance, right? Uh, so you want to have more energy, you just design your system and to match the natural frequency, right? And you design electromagnetic energy, this harvesting damper or piezo or piezoelectric damper to match the electric damping and the mechanic damping. So this is just a vibration problem. Uh, we identify large scale vibration. However, what's the problem to harvest energy from larger scale? Let us take a look. And this is car suspension, right? Another vibration is turbulent. Okay, turbulent or car suspension, no matter which one, usually you have vibration source. For this one, most wind or earthquake. For this one, ground roughness, right? Then you have mechanic system, car suspension or building structure, this is vibration system. After that, you want to harvest energy and you need to convert such kind of energy into electricity you go through some generator or piezoelectric transducer, right? And since this vibration, they have different feature and lower speed, you may need a motion, a motion in the gear system to magnify that, right? After that, you have power electronics to regulate the energy, then go to storage. More important, you have to control the vibration, right? So this system, you will say, is really, really, multidisciplinary problem. It needs a certain level solution. It's not just vibration, okay. It involves the vibration, electronics design, control, electronics material, everything, right? So take a look at my background, right? I have, I have different background. I say, I, we have vehicle dynamics, right? And master degree, I work on the vibration side and PhD degree work on the control, and I have electronics background, then in the company, I can build hardware, right? So I have all this background. Therefore, I think after I come back to university, I can create, create a path, career path, that I can do better than any people who in this area for decades. So, this is why I choose energy halting, specifically work on the larger scale energy halting, right? It's not just a vibration to match the natural frequency match the damping problem. And you have to consider everything, certain network solution, design transducers, and consider the vibration control, you need to consider electronics. 
So then I read my, when I come back to university on my first day, I go to the university IP office. I want to fill a pattern. So I talk with the university IP person in Stony Brook. I said, I want to harvest energy from the tall building. She didn't like the idea. So she's not convinced. So, and I still continue to move forward. Okay, I said, specific idea is like that. In this type of building, okay, type 101, okay. The, there's huge vibration. To reduce the vibration, people usually put a tuned mass damp on the top, like that. And if the mass, uh, the building swing to one direction, this mass move to another direction. Then the vibration energy get dissipated by this oil damper, right? This is large energy, right? In 2008, most of people talk about uh, mean watts energy, right? As I said, in that time, you can harvest five watts energy, you can publish in Nature of Science. How much is this energy? This each show, there are eight show overs here, right? And each one, Actually, during the vibration, only four works. Each one will get 10 to 40 kilowatts energy compared with the five watts energy. This huge potential, right? So then I write a proposal to National Science Foundation. I said, okay, we want to have energy and reduce the vibration, right? So the dual functional in electricity generating tuned mass lamp. So I was lucky that the uh, reviewer liked the idea. So I jumped into this field and work in the energy halting. Okay. And this is turbulent energy halting. Okay. And the tuned mass lamp idea. And uh, here, one specific idea is uh, to use two mass in series instead of one mass. And the reason is dynamic motion rectifier. We don't use gear to magnify the motion. We use two mass to magnify the motion. Why? Because the resonance. As I mentioned, the vibration is a resonance, right? If you ha happen at the resonance, the motion get magnified. So this motion get magnified once. This magnified another time. In that way, we can achieve small, a much a much better mass effect. For example, then type 101, the total mass of 730 tons is no is like more four or five hundred cars you crash into a ball and put it on the building. Okay. Now for this one, I can reduce the mass requirement from 700 to 470. Okay. So it's much smaller. However, there's a problem because I mentioned magnification, you reduce the mass, I achieve better effect. However, in the building, space is problem, right? If this one more one meter, now this were more six meters. And this tall building, every square feet is expensive. They don't want to give you six feet, six meters, six times, right? So, and Another idea, we say, okay, I have electric knowledge, right? We can use the electric resonance. And the electric resonance uh, to, that happened in electric domain to magnify the electric voltage, right? In that way, we can achieve same effect of the tuned mass sample. So, and this is how I convince the funding agencies to support me, right? Is, if I said, okay, I just have this energy, like the first day I meet the IP person in Stony Brook University, they wouldn't support that. Okay, so is there some design control problem I escape? Second, I mentioned cost attention, right? And you look at the car and uh, vehicle industry is very important to Michigan. So car is a good example when I look into that to take it into this discussion, right? And in the cars, cars uh, okay. And 100% energy to the tank, only one third is converted into mechanical energy, right? So two thirds north, north. Uh, two thirds north roughly exhaust take away one third and radiator take one third. 
uh, there are different ways to have synergy. For example, the regenerative bricking has been commercialized already, right? And then they have synergy from the vehicle exhaust. Uh, then this energy halving from the suspension. So this number from literature, and I didn't revise, actually this uh, overestimated somehow. Okay, so now the suspension. So uh, to have some suspension, and it's usually the oil shock over, right? During the vibration, the energy get dissipated. For some minor, military car, they even use water cooling to reduce the temperature, right? Why not directly convert this energy into electricity, right? I designed different type of vibration shock absorber. And this is one type of shock absorber. And for example, this rig pinion, right? You have rig pinion, you drive, they drive the generator. Here you can have both group drive the system, then you drive the generator here. So I did it. Uh, so then we build the hardware. I we drive on the road and test all, all, all the efficiency and power. So this is paved road when uh, this is a suburban. Okay. When we draw the mirror, the show over vibration two to four millimeters, we can get a five to hundred watts, right? It's significantly large compared with mean watts, zero watts energy, because this lower speed, you have higher speed, you can have hundred watts. That corresponding two to three, two to four percent efficiency. The reason is this uh, uh, BMW's data, BMW, 530 diesel engine, okay. And uh, no more, this is New Europe driving cycle, okay. Basically, there's no accessory. You keep the essential electronics in the car. And it consumes 390 watts electricity. This electricity comes from the uh, alternator, okay. So this is, uh, the BMW says it's 4% fuel efficiency. So it's significant important consider the United States we have 250 million cars. So uh, this, we get a lot of uh, news media attention, some award and like that. And uh, I, I like this picture. The reason is when I first jumped into this area, Dr. Daimen gave a, uh, a career achievement talk about the title of the good vibration. So it happened in that time, when the news highlight the put good vibration, I didn't choose the title. The communication office in the university take the title. Okay, so now come to the ocean. <clears throat> so and when I, after I work on the tour building, after I work on the car suspension, I failed another opportunity, ocean, right? And why ocean? Okay, and ocean you only point one to point two hertz. The frequency is very very low. And the type of one one, that, that tall building, the natural frequency is 0.146 hertz. <clears throat> so it's almost the same frequency, right? And the, the tall building, the structure vibration is about one feet. Okay, no more. And then the earthquake time, it came up to one meter. Okay. And for, for the ocean wheel, the amplitude is one to two meters, right? So the knowledge I accumulated for the tall building, I can use for here, right? So another thing is the power take off. I design hardware like a suspension. I use this hardware to harvest energy, right? This is the energy conversion mechanism. And according to Dr. Farquhar, it's mostly important, okay? And in 2010, in that time, I just turned my head to the ocean side. I read this paper. Okay. His paper, he said, power take off. The power take off is a machinery that convert the mechanical energy into electricity, like generator, gearbox, red pinning, or the type of thing, right? He said, power take off is personally single most important element in wave energy technology. And I underline many possible, most of the failure to date. So he, uh, he built the first European, uh, European wheel energy converter that connect to the grid. It's in the Pico Island in Portugal. 
So it's here, it will operate for 90 years. So the idea is like that, like a bucket upside down, the wheel move up and down, draw the air in and out. So no matter air in and out, then the generator always rotates one direction. So the power takeoff is this system. Okay, so another thing is, this is a ocean's lake. Okay, this is the first commercial wheel energy farm, but it's a trial. Okay, the reason is, this guy's built two megawatts wheel energy farm, it failed in three or four months, everything failed. Okay, so that the mechanism you say that way, so this uh, like this type of vibration, they use the shock absorber, like push the oil out, and then and uh, use the check valve to convert the bi direction flow into one direction, draw a hydraulic motor, then draw a generator, right? So again, you can say they want to have generator into one direction rotation. So ocean wheel with vibration problem now. They want to generate to rotate one direction. The, in my work, when I work on the shock absorber project, and we convert the bi direction motion into one direction rotation. That is the mechanical motion rectifier. So that is almost the same mechanism as the shock absorber project. So I will show you how. Okay, T pay attention to this rotation direction here. Okay. So this is like wave motion, you see here, the generator. This is two direction motion, this is go one direction, right? And this is I called mechanical motion rectifier. So uh, in that way, you have buoy in the ocean, right? This buoy move up and down, draw the generator to generate energy. This is mechanical motion rectifier and the trick part is just the gearbox. And this bi-direction motion, one direction rotation. Inside the gearbox, we use one-way clutch. Okay. And where's the one-way clutch? Everyone actually you use that every day. You back to the score. And in the back, there's a one-way clutch, right? So back gear. You drive the car to the score. And in the car, there's an engine starter. And your generator, drive, your motor drive the engine, the engine to not drive the motor, this engine starter, there's a one with clutch. I have my bachelor degree in automotive engineering. I borrow not of knowledge I learned in automotive and use here. Okay, so that is, uh, so in electric domain, you can understand that way. And this is, uh, I say to DC uh, rectifier, right? And your battery, your cell phone, whatever you use, DC battery, but this all this night in the home is AC, right? Here you change the AC into DC through this diode, right? And this diode allow the uh, current to go to one direction. And you also have smooth and capacitor to keep the steady, right? Here in, in mechanical domain, we replace this one way clutch as uh, replace the diode with one way clutch. It will allow the motion um, rotate in one direction only, right? And the flywheel wheel will stabilize the rotation, look like a uh, smooth and capacitor. So that is the principle. Okay, generally speaking, look into ocean, there are all kind of energy. Ocean wheel, tidal stream, ocean current, river current, ocean thermal energy, and uh, or another thing is the ocean san, san, uh, sanity. Basically, the salt, they have different concentrations. There's chemical energy there. And also when marine, bi marine biomass. So take wheel example. The wheel, okay, totally wheel, uh, wheel energy resource. Consider all the technical feasibility, okay. And it can power one third of the home or the country, one third of electricity. However, in United States now, there's no single wheel energy converter that connected to the grid. 
So although the total potential is one third, it can contribute one third of all the electricity need in the country, but the current contribution is 0%. Okay, so another thing is the power density is huge and the solar energy and the Usually, solar energy, one square meter, you can get 100 to 200 watts. And wave energy, you have one square meter device, you can get two to three kilowatts. So it's huge, but it's not used. This is why it excited me to look into this field. Okay, so more important, and now you can use this energy power a lot of things in the ocean, right? the blue economy, right? Blue economy including everything in related with the ocean. However, nowadays you need power, right? No matter underwater vehicle or uh, fish farm, you need electricity, right? So we can use the ocean energy to power the blue economy. So that is DOE's vision. Okay, uh, and the DOE, DOE published the report 2019. Okay, so basically you get energy from ocean, you power this in the sea. Ocean observing, underwater vehicle, fish farm, and uh, uh, marine algae and seawater mining, right? You also can use this energy in the coastal, coastal area, for example, disaster relief, like Florida, right? And uh, Puerto Rico several years ago. And after storm, you can use this energy, right? You can also use energy to power water desalination. And take a isolated community, they really, really need electricity. Most isolated community are island, right? Like uh, Northern Virginia, Northern Michigan, there are a lot of island areas, it's hard to get electricity, right? So we can get energy from ocean, ocean, including the whale in the lake. Okay, so this whale energy converter, this type of thing, as I said, it is, there's no single unit that connected the grid. So the first pattern is more than 250 years ago, not 230 years ago, okay. so. And here the 1940s, and in Japan, people use wave energy converter to power the net house, right? The research, there's no much. And then the oil energy crisis drove the research, right? You can say 1970, this number of papers, okay, this is oil price. Now the oil price is high also. Right, okay. So it draws the research. Each year, there are more than 1,600 papers published on the ocean energy. So 2008 is an important time. And important time not because I come back to university in 2008, okay. And important is the federal government, DOE. Uh, then there's a call for proposal. They want to invest in this area. Okay, actually before 2005, more energy is not accountable into renewable energy. You cannot get tax benefit. Only in 2005, the Congress passed the bill. Okay, they count more energy into renewable energy. 2008, DOE found, uh, there's a first call for proposal about more energy in the time invest $9 million. Later, they create 2006, they create the Water Power Technology Office. Then they have supported this industry in the past three years. So, however, even the support of 2008, if I said ocean wave energy, you have no idea. It's still a ghost, right? And wind energy, everyone immediately you have a picture in your mind big tower, three blade turbine. Wind energy, you don't know what that. So, and there are so many type of wave energy converter, right? Then there are different criteria to how to classify them. There are also different uh, criteria to say, to judge which one is the best. Okay, 
there's no uniform way. For example, people say, okay, based on the location, this on shield, near shield, off shield device, right? Uh, based on the uh, cap wave capture structure side, you have buoy, you have attenuator, they have flap type of same. There's a differential pressure under the water, right? You have oscillating water column. I show you this over dam over topping to let the wheel come here to let to let the water drink down to get energy, right? So there are many many different type of wave energy converter. Based on the particle of you have hydronic system, you have piston drive the generator, right? You have air, like this one is air turbine, right? You have mechanical system to direct draw that. So many different ways. There's no research convergence. Okay. So uh, take a typical system here. And basically, you have wave energy, you have mechanical energy, you have electric energy eventually sent to the user. From wave energy to the mechanical energy, like the buoy, right? The buoy, you put the water that cap, uh, catch the wave energy into mechanical energy. Out of that, this buoy move up and down, you draw a generator motor here, this part take off. Then you have power electronics here, right? And more important, you have control system here, right? So this is really, really multidisciplinary. And the ocean is ocean is a shared environment, right? You cannot put you you put there some fisher fishery said okay I need to fish here, right? And or some marine transport say I need to use the pass, right? You have to consider all the environment, economic, society, policy, community need. So really, really need a multidisciplinary. And in the technical side, we need to know hydrodynamics. We need to know the structure design. We need to know power takeoff, power electronics, dynamics control, material manufacturing, right? We almost need all the knowledge. So, so uh, in my research group, we are many draw the research convergency, right? So, and uh, 2016, the DOE uh, found uh, the Water Power Technology Office. Uh, we are also to use the energy to power the blue economy. 2009, this 19, this power blue economy report. And uh, we also extend our research to the marine current, tidal current energy and offshore wind. So that is a funded project after 2010. And we develop wave develop energy converter at different scale and different technology. And we use the wave energy to power ocean communication, power sea water desalination, and power fish farm, right? Power underwater robot. Okay. So then we have a current combined current wave energy converter, and we also have offshore wind. I briefly talk about this. Okay. I don't go to technical details. So we built a device, we test it in the ocean. This is eight miles into the ocean. And we also build a device, not just get 100, no, this is 10 kilowatts, uh, tested in the national lab. So, and part of off is most important system. However, as I mentioned, if you want to convert energy, you have to consider everything, including the wave environment, the wave structure, interaction, certain dynamics, power electronics, right? And in this, pro in this project, we work on everything. Highlight this is hydrodynamics. We test this in university mains tank. Okay, so, uh, so this is result. One thing I want to show you, okay. And the two body system compared with one body hydrodynamics. And you look into the buoy motion and the corner motion. Okay. And because it's out, because they have two body system, the two will move out of face. And if we design it well, let me show you again. When the buoy move up, this column where the tank move down. In that way, the relative motion will be larger. This is why 
this system, two body compared with one body, uh, and this two body, okay, this one body, we can double the power output. The power will be function of resistor, you connect a generator, okay. The best can be two times, the best of this two times of this one. So, so this hydrodynamics part, and overall efficiency like that, we test this one, and this is called a capture width ratio, right? Uh, capture width ratio for uh, for this device, we can have 50 to 60%. And they have uh, mechanical energy PTO is 50 to 80% efficiency. Or certain, this is what we can get, about 20% energy into electricity, okay? So, okay, this is another design, okay? Another design I, I talk about motion rectifier, right? Uh, and motion rectifier, and there's a problem here. Okay, let me see, okay. I copy a wrong page, okay. So, and I mentioned that we use bicycle, okay. Bicycle, you ride the bicycle on the flat road, no problem. You ride bicycle up here, no problem. You ride bicycle down here, what's the problem? You need brake. Without brake, the bicycle knows control, right? Therefore, we have we 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 have we use one way clutch inside, and this one way clutch will create a problem. And in mechanical domain, electric domain, what we do, we replace the semiconductor diode uh, with transistor, transistor controllable then we achieve controlled performance. Okay, so again, now we replace with one component that you can find in the car. Which component? In the car, there are two, another unique component, electromagnetic clutch. Electromagnetic clutch, you can engage, disengage. And for example, this one uses the air conditioner. You push the button and you gain, you, the engine engages the compressor, right? And there actually there's another one. I didn't use that yet. So the clutch, you switch that. This mechanic clutch, right? It's controllable. Now, what I said, the bicycle gear, this clutch is not controllable. Now we can use a controllable clutch, right? So. That is active motion rectifier, and we implement this build a prototype here. And another thing, we we'll are work on the control core design. And what's the control core design? And you guys learned the control system, right? You have plant, and you have sensor, you have actuator, and you just design the controller, right? You measure the transfer function, like, and uh, you you get. A, then you design controller to control the system so that you can the system is stable. You have reasonable uh, gain margin and phase margin, right? This is control system you guys learned. Control core design is we take the plant into consideration. Not only design the controller, we design the plant, we design the sensor, the design actuator, all or system concurrently. The current in this, the problem is normally in the wave energy converter, what people do is, okay, one person design the wave capture device. Okay, next person you design the power take off. After that, then another person design power electronics. Okay, give this to the control engineer. Okay, you're going to design that, design the control. What's the problem? This is the lesson we learned, like bicycle gear, we hold almost a perfect PTO to convert this oscillation into one direction rotation, right? Almost perfect. However, it cannot control like your bicycle down here direction, right? We, when we, we need a certain level consideration about everything, this control core design. We also need to con consider the environment, right? So, for, uh, so or not uh, this multidisciplinary knowledge to need to be used. For example, when you design this wave capture device, 
you need to consider the hydrofluid interaction, right? So when you design the actuator, that is your PTO part, you need to control or you need to have the controllability, right? So this is the control core design. We have one new project to work on the control core design. So this is another thing is, in additional innovation in the PTO, we have double flap design. This control, this consider single flap like this. This is almost no rotation, no rotation. The double flap, you can say the rotation. Why is this important? Okay. And for floating wave energy converter, because the side direction force this is more than line, you only cost 40% of the total cost, right? Because you just imagine that way, this certain whole flap more together. If you, you want to have high rotation, you have to make it as steady as possible, right? Then you have to make the more than line stiff. For the result, the wave energy converter, you only you can calculate the cost. People when they consider cost, more than that cost of forty percent. Now in this double flap, we don't need to worry about that, right? So another thing is the uh, generator. Okay, and uh, one design you need to research actually quite a few designs. They put this generator on the hinge, right? Flap is rotation, you put the hinge, it's perfect location, right? However, that's problem. And the wheel is usually 10 seconds, so wheel period. Okay. And you can calculate the flap, you 10 seconds draw, and then 10 sec five second draw here, five second draw back. Okay. The RPM is two RPM. You look like a watch, the double your second is the watch speed, it's very, very slow. Therefore, you need bigger gearbox. In this system, and we put the generator on the top and put an arc here and to use pony to draw that. This look like a big pony and small pony. Then we have large gear ratio. So this is the video. Right? Then you can have high speed. So, and I mentioned the power, uh, the power in blue economy here, we use the wave energy converter to make fresh water, right? The water desolation, you pump, the, you have piston pump, and your wave energy converter draw the piston here and draw the high pressure in the loop. And here, this is reverse osmosis membrane here. Then you push the water out. Right, this reverse osmos, and the pressure needed to uh, overcome uh, reverse osmos pressure. So, and another another thing is, and after you get that, it is concentrated seawater. Concentrated seawater urine is called a brine. You come back to ocean, it can create pollution, right? So, however, just benefit. Benefit is the concentrated seawater. There are a lot of mineral inside. We can use this mineral, this nissan extraction. Okay. Uh, so, so this is the device we build, and this is the water we produce, fresh water. Okay. And let me see the way. So the fresh water come out. So I mentioned the wheel, this gearbox, right? This gearbox almost the same. They're different, different. Okay, you have a turbine here. Another thing, you have another one with clutch inside. This is a device, the hybrid wheel energy converter, where we can generate energy from both wheel and the current. So, this is a tank test we did in France. We stayed two weeks there to do did the tank test. So then now we are working on the Office of Navy research to provide a solution to power the soldier, right? And when the military de deploy the soldier to the place, 
they don't know. They said there's not a wheel or not a current. Why not both, right? This idea is attractive to them. Another thing, we make it portable, like a kayak. You can quickly assemble together. You pump air, pump water inside this balloon. You throw it into the ocean, you have some energy. So we we'll also work on the offshore wind. Offshore wind is a very, very exciting topic. If you look into the uh, White House news two weeks ago, and there's big news about the government's plan. Okay, there, one, there are some numbers I can cite. Okay, currently uh, in the wind energy, okay, then the base of wind energy worldwide, there are about 700 gigawatts. They already implement. Off you win, how much? Is 0.1 gigawatt. 0.1. And the potential, how much? Potential two thirds of the energy are outside of, of the land, off you win. But compared with land based, they only use 0.1 compared with 700 gigawatts. So then uh, Biden administration, they are going to invest money to focus offshore wind energy research. Okay, there are some research initiative and we are lucky to get one of the project from offshore wind very recently. Okay, so the contract is still in process and the Biden administration for the wind energy currently is less than one gigawatts. They want to, in, or want to increase to 30 gigawatts. So what's the uniqueness of offshore wind? Okay, offshore wind, they put in the ocean, there's a vibration, right? Vibration is not. I mentioned I have background vibration. There, the, the idea about tune the mass damper for the for building control vibration, I talked about that just now, can be used to control vibration of the offshore wind. So, now the ball more out of phase to reduce the vibration of the building. You put a ball here, it more out of phase to harvest the vibration energy and also reduce the vibration, right? And instead of, the, so let us say you, you will see an idea like that people will not buy, right? So people say, I can do that too. Why I need to give you money, right? We have some uniqueness here. This selling point, we replace the shock over with uh, this device we build, yeah, uh, right? This shock over, we place with shock over and energy harvester plus a spring here. And what's the effect? We can significantly reduce okay. the vibration need, right? For this one, you only is 1,300 tons for five megawatts, right? And the, um, you only you reduce the vibration, you need a hundred tons of mass. If you use the configuration I proposed, then we can reduce the mass by half. So to achieve the same effect. So we also, I mentioned a new project we are working on. Okay. And this is a cable, right? Uh, offshore wind, this cable. Okay. Power line cable, uh, pay cable. Okay. Power line cable, you only this size for the offshore wind. So it is a significant maintenance cost. The power line cable, they contribute 70% of the maintenance cost. So the reason is the power line cable during the vibration time, a lot of vibrations, the bend, right? So we have one project work on the power line cable vibration. And so, okay, I'm done. And I want to say, in our research, we mostly focus on wave energy research. We want to draw the research convergency. I welcome students to join me together to draw the research convergency. I also talk about my research. Uh, my research. Okay. Uh, okay. One, one particular to draw the research convergency is you need both market and technology. So you need a market pool and technology driven, like the offshore wind, 
no, no, like remote community, right? And like you, you can use the wave energy can produce hydrogen, right? Wave energy you control, you con you generate the electricity. You can split the water, right? And you can use a static pressure for the storage too, right? And you can use that uh, uh, brine after or all seawater desalination. That part you can extract the nitrogen inside. Okay, so I I talk about my career. Why I go from mechanical. Uh, Oh, what, why, let me say that way. <clears throat> I talk about my career, why I go from uh, automotive engineering, mechanical engineering to the ocean side. And okay, so I hope you guys know that when you join a field, you have your own background and take your knowledge to make contribution in the new field. Okay, so you, you want to do research, let me know. Thank you. Economy class next semester? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, we are going to have blue economy class. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So sorry, I didn't get a chance to ask a question. My office is the end of the uh, second floor, the first floor. Uh, First room, and uh, let me know you you have questions or want to do research. Yo, yeah, 